Hello there everybody and welcome back to another episode of Anecologist Plays where we are learning more about nature by playing games and in this case we are running away from black ants over here on the porch and we are back in grounded. Now our objective is that we need to get to the top of this chair because up there apparently is Dr. Wendell Tully's scabby. So let's go and get up there I guess. <laughs> now we are equipped now of course with our new weapon which is the rusty spear and this spear gives creatures an infection which reduces their resistances I believe so it makes them more vulnerable to your attacks. And now let's kill another fire ant. These fire ants are most likely an invasive species not native to the USA so we are doing a good job getting rid of them. Now, of course, ants can be invasive around in many ecosystems around the world. Here in South Africa, for example, we have the Argentine ant, which really is invasive in our indigenous shrublands, uh, especially close to human habitation. And uh, they have got major impact on the ecosystems that they invade. And as far as I recall, the fire ant here, I'll have to double check, but this fire ant is most likely an invasive species. Now, the way to get to the upper yard I just made a mistake, I'm running around the hose pipe here, but we should actually be getting onto the pan over here, and then miss that jump, and I always miss that jump, but get onto the baseball over here. There we go, great stuff. And then we can make our way onto the chair, at least. From the chair, we need to get onto the hammer, and then there by the pipe, that is where the scabby would be. However, between us and there, we have a whole bunch of black ants. So I'm going to equip my ant annihilator, equip my coltana. Oh, there are also dust mites down there. Oh, great. There we go. Killing some dust mites, as we talked about last time. Very weird arachnids. And more closely related to ticks than they are to spiders, but they're still arachnids. But, and previously they were lumped together in the Akari, which was the tick and mite group. However, they have now been split. As we have realized that they are not, in fact, that closely related. Okay, what a bloodbath. Well, technically not blood. Hemolymph, I do believe, is the correct term because they don't have blood like we do in closed vessels. Instead, invertebrates have... I'll get back to you now, don't worry. Invertebrates have a an open circulatory system where hemolymph, their blood basically, is just kind of pumped in relatively open networks. Okay, now we do need to get across to that point over there. I think the way to do it is to run up along here, jump and parachute across. So you need a relatively new dandelion tuft, but yeah, there we go. We made it. Yay! The dirty ashtray. Aha. Okay. Nail clipper, of course. And some toenails. Thank you for that, Wendell. Need to use our hammer here, our tier 3 hammer to bust open toenails. Now, the toenails here, of course, made of keratin, which is similar to well, basically the same thing found in rhino horn. So, people that are, of course, poaching rhinos for their horn. May as well just come shrink themselves down and come and harvest some toenails. It will give the same effect. And we got some sour candy here, some sour lumps. Now, usually, I guess you would really struggle to get enough sour lumps in this yard because they are very limited. But of course, with the wonderful little Christmas trees we have at our base, we do, do not have a shortage thereof. Okay, we can't press the power on yet, so we need to bust open this and put in... Aha! Right, and I guess switch that on. Transferring biometric data, Wendell Tully. Biometric data transfer complete. 
Audio file downloaded. Dr. Wendell Tully. Title, Goodbye. <clears throat> Hello, my scabby-wearing friend. I do not know who you are or how you came by this message, but please tell them I tried. Tell Trudy, Thor, my little Sarah. Tell the world. The sun is setting on our yard, and it brings back so many memories. Sitting in this chair, my favorite chair, my thinking chair. I fear this may be the last time I lay eyes on such a beautiful sight. I'm nearly out of time. My body shrivels more with each passing day. Mm. Even my scabby can barely fit on my bony wrist. The spacer, my greatest achievement. A disaster. The final chapter in the book of my many failures. Perhaps in solitude, free from my family, from burgle, and from <laughs> ominent, perhaps I can finally find a cure to this damnable reasoning. So, this will be my last adventure into the miniature world. I leave the warmth of the sun and embrace the unknown. I'll either find the answer or shrivel in the darkness below. To my lab underneath the shed. This is Dr. Wendell Tully signing off. Goodbye. Aw, oh, that's sad. So yeah, it seems he has realized that he is probably not going to make it. But we are not giving up on him. We are going to go and find him and help him. But in order to do that, we need to be more prepared. Looking, looking at our map, we are actually very close to the entrance. To the crawl space under the shed here. Aha. Let's just come in and have a look here, shall we? Okay, we have got some salt shards. We've got some hilbasa over here. Salt arrows. Berry leather. Very interesting, all of this. Oh, a frostbitten recipe. A note detailing how to harness the natural refrigeration powers of ice cap mints to preserve food. Which means, yes, we can now make a fridge. Well, this is awesome. Okay, so we need pine cone pieces, mint shards, and black ant parts. Okay, so what we really need would be the pine cone pieces. A black ox burger, nice. Oh, even in here he had the he had a photo of the family. And look, there's the hamster. <laughs> Shame. Working in the dark is playing tricks on my mind. I fear every shadow, hear whispers in the silence. But most of all, I miss my family. I just know it. Oh. Wendell Tully misses his family. I accidentally walked through the wrong, wrong door there, so that's where we are going to go next time. We're not going in there yet. For now, we are actually going outside a bit here. Yeah? Hello there, everybody. This is Will from the Future. I'm just popping in because I realized that that video was a little bit too short and not educational enough, so I am from the future recording this little clip here just to talk about one of the most annoying creatures in this game. And they are the fire ants. Now we should be right here by their mound. And there is a soldier as well. Now in the video that I actually recorded this morning earlier, which is going to come out ooh, in December, I do believe. That was the first time I actually got any mandibles from these guys and i would be making the fire staff using that so unfortunately even though we are getting mandibles now in this episode we're not going to have the fire staff yet for now however we are just quickly killing a few of these guys and heading into their nest 
Now, these, as I've mentioned earlier in this episode, are most likely the red imported fire ant, also known simply as Rifa ants. Now, these ants are not from the USA, where this game is set. This game is set in Maine, as I've mentioned before. And these guys are from South America. And they are invading many areas in North America and around the rest of the world. So they are highly invasive. Now, they are what we call disturbance specialists. So they like being in areas that are actually quite disturbed like wherever there is human habitation so along road verges as well they tend to really take over and displace some of the indigenous species that are there now i was wondering why my game was lagging and i think i found the reason why all the food here i am going to just pick them up pick it up so he doesn't lie around and lag cause my game to lag okay so that was way too much food if your game lags come a lot in the upper yard do come down into this ant's nest and just come and kill them and the food that they had stored here's another soldier now fire ants or reefers like these they have got the different types of workers they've got the minims which are the tiny little ones then they've got the medium-sized workers which are the ones that we are seeing uh, there, the ones in the back there, the ones that just spit acid at me, which I'm not sure whether they actually can do that. And then you have the mages, which are act as soldiers, like these big soldiers that we had just encountered, or this big soldier we had just encountered. Now, all of them are technically workers, although the major workers do act like soldiers, and they are there to protect the nest against, well, intruders like us. Now I have just checked and the backside over here is not quite right for the Rifa, for the red imported fire ants, but it is the best fit of all species. The Rifa ants very often have these dark abdomens here, but the section between the thorax and the gaster, as the abdomen there is called, should actually be more of a few smaller humps which are not present in these ones now technically what these ants would also be doing now that i've killed a whole bunch of them is they would take all their dead to kind of a cemetery because they do practice the i'll have to look up the scientific term for that but they do take dead individuals and dump them somewhere else also old food scraps they also dump on a refuge pile so they are one of the ant species that will do that not necessarily go bury their dead but they will take it out of the colony to avoid any diseases spreading oh there's a mega mold molder here as well and another very interesting behavior that these ants will do well first of all they will have they've got different colonies so some of them will be monogamous which basically means one queen or one female in this case one queen some of them will be polygonous meaning many queens so a colony may be founded by one queen or by many and of course the ones with the many queens will initially have more workers starting out but as soon as the first workers actually start after colony establishment there is actually quite a lot of competition between the different queens and between queens and workers from other queens which is weird but they're working together but they're competing with one another another behavior that they are very well known for is actually the rafting behavior where they will hold on together and you see this to some extent in the movie ants where the ants i don't think they are actually fire ants but you never know but you see that in that movie where the colony is being flooded and they actually hold on to one another and this is mainly to actually get the queen to safety but they will hold on to one another and form these big rafts now there is another game that i will be playing at some point known as empires of the undergrowth and with that game, now recently, they actually did put in the fire ants. And you are able to do raft building, which is awesome. And it is a game that I am very much looking forward to playing as well on the channel. And that may be the next game that I do. But as I've mentioned, these guys are disturbance 
specialists and they thrive in any areas where there is some kind of disturbance, road verges and so on. And in many cases they are able to displace the indigenous species that occurred in the area. And that is obviously bad and they can invade extremely rapidly. And as a result, many nations like Australia, for example, have major eradication projects to try and get rid of these guys. And in many cases, they've actually been successful. In Australia, for example, they had removed, I believe, 99% of the Arifa population. Unfortunately, however, they do very easily reinvade and is a continuous effort to try and keep them out. Now, the reason they're called fire ants is, of course, because the venom stings as if your hand is on fire. And uh, yeah, apparently very, very painful. And quite a few people are highly allergic to them. With up to 6% of people being bitten by these guys experiencing anaphylaxis. So, you know, suffocating and allergic reactions and really, very, very bad. And even if you are not allergic to them now, you can also develop an allergy to them. And they really are one of the 100 worst invaders in the world. And on that note, back to past Will with a very calm voice to talk about pine cones. Before we end today's episode, we are going to be collecting some pine cone pieces over here from this female pine cone. Now, I know this is a female pine cone because male pine cones are far smaller than the females. The males just produce pollen, whereas the females will produce the seeds in, uh, in the cones over here. And as the seeds ripen, the cone splits open, starting from the tip, moving towards the bottom here. In between these scales would still be some unripe seeds or seeds which are not ready to germinate yet. But the cone has fallen off the tree and these seeds are never going to germinate. The scales here which have split open have already released the seeds and they have spread by, via wind somewhere. And they are going to then, of course, hopefully germinate. So we're just going to be picking up the pine cone pieces here and collecting some more from this one over here. These pine cone pieces are going to be very useful in making a new crossbow for us as well as the fridge that we just got the recipe for. So here in the eerie backyard, I am going to bid the all farewell. I hope you enjoyed the episode. It was a little bit of a short one, I believe and i hope you learned something as well next time we are going to be facing a creature i really do not want to face that will be in the undershed so until next time everybody stay safe i will see you all soon